Assalamu alaikum, respected chairperson and learned audience. A very good afternoon to all. So before I start, I want to raise a question to the session. What is the thing that a surgeon or more specifically a cardiac surgeon worry the most after doing an operation? I believe one of the top answers will be the postoperative bleeding because it is common after cardiac surgery and sometimes it is so severe that can be life threatening for the patients and very intimidating for the surgeons as well. So I think it's need a bit more uh, to look into it. Uh, that is why I am going to present this paper, which is relation between preoperative plasma fibrinogen level and postoperative bleeding following off pump coronary artery bypass surgery. So this is Dr. Tarek Murshid, I'm cardiovascular and thoracic surgeon working at Beatford Hospital. And I want to acknowledge the guide, uh, guidance and support of Professor Dr. Aslam Hussain, who was my guidance supervisor, the Department of Cardiac Surgery, BSM. So I will go around this topic by this manner. So it is true that coronary artery disease is one of the most scrutinized diseases in medical science. And this revascularization is the most studied intervention. So conventionally, in the bypass surgeries, it is performed using the cardiopulmonary bypass with cardioplasic arrest. But in terms of off-pump coronary artery bypass, the grafts are placed on the coronary arteries of a beating heart using the intracoronary shunts, thereby avoiding the aortic cross-clumping and CPB. So it has some benefits like early extubation, reduced preoperative blood transfusion and hospital stay. However, it is still accompanied with the risk of complications such as bleeding, infection, stroke, MI with heart failure, renal insufficiency, and pulmonary dysfunction. And this bleeding may be caused by surgical factors or disturbed hemostasis or maybe combination of the both. Here comes the role of fibrinogen. We all know it is a key protein in hemostasis synthesized by the liver and it is also known as clotting factor one. And its normal level in plasma is two to 4.5 gram per liter. So an increasing number of studies indicate that fibrinogen plays a more important role to achieve adequate hemostasis. And clinical studies have already reported that there is an inverse correlation between pre-op plasma fibrinogen level and post-op bleeding after conventional CABG. But in our country, most of the cases are done in off-pump manner. So the relationship between these two is less is in investigated in this arena. So the concept of pre-op identification of the patients with increased risk and to curtail the amount of blood products is interesting because it offers the possibility to initiate countermeasures, which can eventually reduce the stress, time and financial burden. So we tried to look upon whether low pre-op plasma fibrinogen level is associated with increased post-op bleeding following op cab or not. So it was a comparative cross-sectional study. It was done in Department of Cardiac Surgery, BSMMU, and the duration of which was 18 months. Total number of patients was 60, and purposive sampling, sampling method was applied to this study because we set a cutoff value of pre-op plasma fibrinogen level was 3.1 gram per liter. And according to that, two groups, 30 and 30 patients were created. And uh, the patients with some conditions were excluded from this study, like the patients having known bleeding disorder, patients receiving heparin, hepatic and renal impairment, congestive cardiac failure, patients needing valve surgery along with CAVG, needing conversion to on-pump CAVG, or patients operated on emergency basis or redo surgery. Ethical clearance also done according to the protocol of the institution. Actually, this is this was the study flowchart. And on the basis of literature review and our experience, we selected some variables to be studied. We will go into brief in the result section. So if we say, if we compare the demographic and anthropometric variables in this study, between among age, sex, and BMI, only the age distribution was found significantly different, statistically significantly different in between the two groups. The comparison of preoperative risk variables like shortness of breath, chest pain, hypertension, diabetes, and COPD, there was none found to be significant. 
and the comparison of preoperative biochemical, hematological, and echocardiographic variables like CRP, serum albumin, creatinine, serum calcium, ejection fraction, hemoglobin, prothrombin time, and activated partial thromboplastin time were not significant as well. However, platelet count was significantly lower in group B. And uh, we studied some paraoperative variables like activated clotting time after the heparinization, after neutralization, duration of surgery, and number of the grafts. These were also not statistically significant. Now comes the main part. If we see the blood loss in the first 12 hours, first 24 hours, and the total drain collection, all these were significantly more in the group B. And if we talk about some more postoperative variables, postoperative blood transfusion also was increased in the group B and duration of the ICU stay was longer. However, the duration of the hospital stay, we did not see any statistically significant difference between the two groups. We tried to do the correlation test and found that there was significant inverse correlation between pre-op plasma fibrinogen and post-op bleeding. And as platelet and age was found significant, we tried to do the multivariate logistic regression analysis where also pre-op plasma fibrinogen level was found to be the most valuable predictor. So there was no post-op thromboembolic events, cardiac ischemic events, re-exploration or mortality in the present study. So in conclusion, we can say that pre-op plasma fibrinogen level appears to be a useful predictor of post-op bleeding in the patients undergoing OPCAM. And also, its pre-op level may indicate us to take necessary steps to prevent post-op bleeding as well as reduce the rate of ICU stay. So I want to talk about some limitations because it was done um, in a small population of the patients and the study time was short and also it was done in a single center of the Bangladesh. That's why keeping all those in mind, a larger prospective studies may be needed and pre-op estimation of plasma fibrinogen should be done routinely and it can be, it should be corrected before surgery to reduce post-op bleeding. So I want to conclude one of my favorite quotes of the renowned professor of surgery, Professor Moses Shine. The most important clotting factor is the surgeon. So not only achieving the adequate hemostasis in the theater, but also to identify, anticipate and initiate countermeasures as early as possible to reduce the post-operative bleeding. So thank you all.